And just again, welcome to St. Peter Clay. We're a little turned the big heart getting bigger, and you can see the construction out there. Well, those being live stream, you can't really see it, but it's exciting to see more of the terrain being moved around. The, the basement crawl space area is being uh, bulldozed out, uh, so there's a lot of things happening on the corner of 4th and Jefferson. So we continue to get excited and thank God for uh, his love and mercy upon us. Our gospel today and our readings today will indicate how, how merciful are we and how have we been dealing with God's mercy in our lives. Uh, let us uh, in, look for the words of mercy in our scripture and our mass today. Let us apply it to our, our own spiritual journey and see how God is calling us and challenging us to be merciful. Remember his own teaching, blessed are those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. mercy. All right, we up this morning. All right. Again, welcome to St. Peter Clay, Church of Big Heart Getting Bigger. This recently we just honored uh, Ann Bell, a member of our parish, and also a member of St. Augustine's Parish in Lebanon, and lifted her home. So we remember her in this Mass and our attentions for our church and this Mass. But we also want to acknowledge uh, Sharon Grider and just pray for her and those who miss her uh, mom uh, very much and uh, during this time. So again, welcome to St. Peter Clay, and we're thankful for this day. Good morning, St. Peter Clay. Good morning. Let us begin with prayer. If you turn to the back of your heritage missal and recite with me the act of contrition. My God, I am sorry for my sins with all my heart. In choosing to do wrong and failing to do good, I have sinned against you whom I should love. Things. I firmly intend with your heart to be a to sin no more, and to avoid whatever leads me to sin. I say that Jesus Christ suffered and died for us. In his name, my God, have mercy. Amen. Let's please stand. Mercy keeps on knocking at the doors of our hearts. 
Even when we've been addressing our weaknesses and sins this week, the Lord's mercy is continually seeking us out. Can I get an amen? Amen. So let us bring ourselves to the Lord as we'll hear about that mercy, the mercy that David had when he could have taken out King Saul, who was trying to kill him. We'll hear in that first reading. Remind ourselves of our humanity and God's desire to be with us in the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, and his divinity, and raising us up as the new Adam. We're going to be given instruction by Jesus to, to bless those who persecute you, bless those who have uh, tried to take advantage of you. We're, we're asking the Lord to help us to know how to do that, and he's going to instruct us in the gospel with that mercy that he wants us to share. Let's first pause and ask God for pardon and forgiveness, brothers and sisters, for as we enter into sickness and the let's call to mind our weaknesses and sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have a great sin, and my thoughts and my words, and what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us all. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Saul went down to the desert of Ziph with 3,000 picked men of Israel to search for David in the desert of Ziph. So David and Abishai went among Saul's soldiers by night and found Saul lying asleep within the barricade with his spear thrust into the ground at his head and Abner and his men sleeping around him. Abishai whispered to David, God has delivered your enemy into your grasp this day. Let me nail him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I will not need a second thrust. But David said to Abishai, do not harm him. For who can lay hands on the Lord's anointed and remain unpunished? So David took the spear and the water jug from their place at Saul's head. And they got away without anyone seeing or knowing or awakening. All remained asleep because the Lord had put them into a deep slumber. Going across to an opposite slope, David stood on a remote hilltop at a great distance from Abner, son of Ner, and the troops. He said, here's the king's spear. Let an attendant come over to get it. The Lord will reward each man for his justice and faithfulness. Today, though the Lord delivered you into my grasp, I would not harm the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last man, Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly the second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are earthly. And as is the heavenly one, so also the heavenly. Just as we have been born the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, let us rise up to the top of the gospel. <laughs> Thank you. 
and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear I say, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down, and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measures will be which you measure will in return be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Church, got mercy? <laughs> Somebody said, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> mercy is so important, church, to understand every single day as a Christian, as a Catholic. Without mercy, we wouldn't even be here, amen? amen. Mercy is so essential to our Christian walk, our walk with the Lord, that God not only will pour it into us, but he expects us to pour it out through us to others. Amen? Amen? Imagine your spouse, imagine your family, imagine your work co-workers, imagine your friends, imagine strangers. Do they need God's mercy? Yes. Yes. Have we shared that with them? Uh, a little more silent. <laughs> Have you ever experienced sharing it with them, any of those people? Yes. Did it ever work out better when you were merciful? God invites us every day. Dios invitamos nosotros cada día para compartir su misericordia. He invites us to share his mercy. We're called to be tanks of mercy everywhere we go, full of his mercy. And whenever it's needed, we spill it over, not just like drip, drip, but splash and falling over, cascading upon them. Because why? Because we know the cost of the mercy that we've experienced through Jesus Christ. You see, only those who have understood their sin and the effects of that sin are the very ones who understand who forgave them of their sin. And in fact, in doing and realizing that, they are willing to be like Christ to someone else. Jesus says, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God has given us every day an example of his walk, 
how he was with sinners. Think about his life, how he treated sinners. Think about his life, how he treated the unclean, the marginalized, those who are on the peripheries. Did he just look at them from a distance? Or did he go to them? Did he touch, not lay his hands on them? Did he not touch them? That mercy, the son of God, the mercy of God, he is our new mercy seat. You see, the people of old, our ancient brothers and sisters, Jewish brothers and sisters and the high priest would sprinkle a chair with the blood of the lamb of sacrifice. And that blood would remind us that God has purified his people by that sacrifice, but it was still a limited experience. But it represented that God was speaking to them in that place of mercy. Yes, God is a just judge. When the people of Israel sinned, he was just. And they were punished. But through Jesus Christ, we walk with his light in our hearts. We walk with his love in our hearts. We're covered by his blood. We are entered into this new life of grace through baptism. And our mercy seat is him. And it looked like the cross, amen? Where his own blood was spilled upon for us and spilled out for us to make atonement, to make us, the, for him to be the propitiation of our sinfulness. He was the ransom. He was the one who took our place, the one who stood in for us and says, I got this. And so all of our sins, all of our sins have been claimed by Jesus. And so when we realize that we have sinned, we can get back up. Amen. amen. Because Jesus is inviting us to get back up in his mercy. His mercy covers us. His mercy invites us, secures us. His mercy washes us. But do we receive it ourselves? You know, the biggest, the hardest part of knowing God is merciful church is letting that mercy come to ourselves and us receiving it. The hardest part isn't that God isn't merciful. You know, God is merciful from the Hebrew mercy we heard here in Hebrew the mercy that God has been associated with is rakam, which means to love or have compassion. Or in Hebrew, kaporeth, the root of mercy, again means ransom, associated with the mercy seat in Exodus chapter 25, verse 22. But also mercy in the root of mercy in Hebrew, chesed, which reminds us of God's goodness, his kindness, his mercifulness. You see, God is who God is. But when we encounter God, we learn how we're a lot of times against God. We don't want to pray. We don't want to go to church. We don't want to be kind to others. We don't want to share. We don't want to take time with those who are less fortunate. God changes the script, amen? God invites us to share in his mercy. And when we share in his mercy, we start to realize he's covered me. Not only today, but all those other times I've fallen and slipped and I messed up, he's covered me. Amen. And when he's covered me, he says, get up, my child, my son, my daughter. Get up, rise up. You are a new creation. He looks at us from the eyes of his son and he invites us to share in a new way. And this is the hardest part, brothers and sisters. It's not that God won't stop being God because God is rich in mercy. We heard that. We just sang that. But the hardest part, church, is saying, I believe that you are merciful to me. And I forgive myself. I'm going to share God's mercy to me right now. I'm going to let his mercy go to those places nobody knows about. I'm going to let the Lord's mercy go to those places where I'm scared of. I'm going to let the Lord's mercy go to the places in my heart that, that I, I didn't even want to deal with today. It's too pretty outside. I don't want to get messy. I don't want my fingers to get sticky. I don't, I don't want my hair to get clumped. I want to just be able to have a nice day, Lord. But you see, when God deals with your sinfulness, he's already understood that you are human. And Jesus in his humanity and his divinity comes into us to raise up our humanity, to share in his divinity. And so you can't look at yourself any longer as just a sinner. You have to now look at yourself as Chosen, beloved, son and heir of God's kingdom. The one who has received God's mercy and the one who Jesus wants to impart his mercy through. 
Never forget, church, that you are an ambassador of Christ's reconciliation. Never forget that God loves you so much that he's already claimed you and your sins. All we have to do now is confess it. All we have to do now is be sorrowful for it. All we have to do now is stop living in the shame of it and letting God walk us through those places of shame and walk us from those places of resignation. I've sinned again. Oops, I did it again. God's calling us to stand up. God's inviting us to walk up. It's too easy to stay in misery instead of mercy. We'd rather choose misery than mercy. What happened to that Easter story when Thomas says, I don't believe that God wrote Jesus rose from the dead. And unless I see him with my own eyes and touch the nail prints with my own fingers and the side, I can't see how this can work. And what does Jesus do? The doors were closed. A week later after he was informed, the door was closed. Jesus walks through the closed and locked door. Can I get an amen? amen. And he goes to who, church? He goes to the very one who was the farthest of the disciples. He went to the one who said, I don't know if God's merciful. I don't know if God loves me. I don't know if God is real. How could he be resurrected? This didn't happen. He says, Thomas, which means twin, which means one of like us today. He says, touch my hands and my side and do not remain in your unbelief, but believe. Thomas then says what? My Lord, my God. What does that mean? He owned everything about Jesus for the first time for himself. He owned it. A lot of times they're like, God, St. Peter Clay, where they're building new church, da, 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 they, them over there, God over there, and God wants to be where? Right here. Because when we come here with him, is on and popping. But Jesus wants you to know that every day you are his temple. And if you're his temple, what are you filled with? Are you filled with remorse? Are you filled with resignation? Are you filled with shame? Are you filled with embarrassment? When Jesus says, I want you to be filled with my love. I want you to be filled with my mercy. I want you to be filled with my forgiveness. I want you to be filled with my peace. It's harder, church, to stay in misery, actually, than mercy. The mercy of God. Let us continue to pray that there's no way we can bless our persecutors. There's no way that we can forgive others. There's no way that we can stop condemning others and stop judging others unless we too see each other with the eyes of mercy. Because after all, under the cross, we're all the same. God sees us the same, those who are sinners in need of grace. And when I look at you, I look at me and I say, if he or she needs mercy, the Lord knows I do. So when you go outside today and you look at other people, you can't say like, well, that person or that group or this. I can't believe that. When you can say they need God's mercy. They need God's help. They need God's patience. And you know why Jesus is merciful? Because if you look at the cross, you can see the combination of mercy and justice. Mercy because he says, forgive them, Father. But justice because he did die for our sins. He was he was nailed. He was crucified. He was stripped. He was beat. He was whipped. Yes, he did all of that. He received all that because the wages of sin is death. And he would rather have himself out of love for you, take it upon himself and die so that we don't have to die eternally. His salvation, he, mercy, and the fruit of mercy is our salvation and knowing that he loves us. And I just want to encourage you, church, this week, people will need God's mercy through you. People will need God's mercy through you. And you know what? We need God's mercy. And if people don't give it to us, we bless them anyways. We pray for them anyways. And that's why Jesus is raising the ante. He's up in the ante. He says, sinners lend. Sinners do this. So nothing new. But when we do it, it's something special. When we forgive, when we bless, when we assist, when we share, when we are patient with others, whoa, that's a witness right there. That's a witness. Cada día necesitamos compartir en la misericordia de Dios, en ayuda a los enemigos, y ruega por los enemigos, y ayuda a los que no tienen. 
Entonces, por nosotros somos los ambasadores de Cristo en su misericordia en cada parte del mundo, pero especialmente en nuestros corazones. También compartir la, la misericordia de Dios contigo adentro. Remind ourselves today as we enter the Mass, Jesus is not outside and beyond. He wants to be inside of you right now in just a moment. He wants to become that bread of life and that cup of mercy so that you and I can become who he calls us to be. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Let us pray that God gives us that mercy in this Mass and we receive it and then we live it. Amen. Together, let us rise up in the mercy of God and offer a renewal of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, we God not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious body. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the seen will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, Amen. Church, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. We ask God now to listen to our needs. For Pope Francis, Bishop John Stowe, all priests, deacons, and all leaders in the church, we pray that they respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the church, we pray that as a community of believers, our actions will be governed by the words of Jesus. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For peace throughout the world, we pray especially for the people of Ukraine and Russia, that they can arrive at a peaceful diplomatic solution to their problems. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have suffered from permanent disabilities, we pray especially for those who suffer from brain and spinal cord injuries, that medical science will soon find a cure to relieve their suffering and pain. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have suffered from illnesses, especially Father Dan Nall, Deacon Jim Bennett, Betty Thornton, David Carpenter, Ernie Vassal, Angie Gillis, Paul Baumgartner, Teresa Phelps Martin, Lenny Thomas, Kathy Drees, Robert Morgan, Jean Cabernet, Ann Donald, Debbie Swisser, Suzanne Griffin, Leona Starks, Pauline Barber, Todd Newburn, Tom Refro, Stacy and Yvonne Weathers, Mary Mitchell, Kathy Cotero, Mary Coffey, Jordan, Bennett, and Sylvester Bond. We pray that through the faith they will soon be restored to health of mind, body, and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
for all who have died, especially Margaret Fogel Robinson, Curtis Scott, Deacon Fly, our military, the elderly family members, friends, innocent lives cut short from abortions, racist acts, suicide, auto accidents, gun violence, drug overdoses, the coronavirus, and weather-related deaths. We pray that all who mourn their deaths will someday be reunited with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For everyone gathered here today and online, we pray that we are thankful for all the gifts God has bestowed on each of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For uh, Aaron and Drew and all the newly engaged couples that God may continue to bless them and their journey to become one in the sacrament of matrimony this year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And thanks again for all our new parents and continued blessings and health, happiness, wholeness, their little babies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, we continue to uh, remember those who grieve or mourn or those who um, are, are really heavy on their hearts for loved ones who are, have gone before them, that they may rest in eternal peace, but then they may be given consolation. Their loved ones rest in eternal peace, and they may be given God's consolation during this time of mourning. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for Johnny Madden and for her hope and healing, we strength, and God's given her strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for Thanksgiving for Mary now, Mary Mitchell now being at Crime Hill and recovering from her past two surgeries. We've got to give her strength and healing. Um, and thanks again for Leona, Leona Starks for her continued healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, and for continued blessings on Dean Bills and our opportunity to have our new church uh, fulfill it this year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, hear these and all prayers. Bless us as we continue to journey together. Uh, bless Mr. McGrath and his engagement as well. Uh, let's continue to pray for all of us and those intentions in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God our Father, we acknowledge your greatness and marvel at all you have done for us. Though we are unworthy of your love and attention, you still love us and are merciful and care for us. Grant our prayers. Help us to be merciful. If it be your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And now to be seated as our altar is prepared. <coughs> The offertory hymn will be number 675, I Just Came to Praise the Lord.
may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By rising it from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we are praying. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
ascension of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to the second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become <coughs> one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Peter Claver, our patron saint, and St. Martin de Porta, St. Catherine Drexel, our co-patron and patroness, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you after passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Ruem and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and
Behold the Lamb of God, the only one who takes away the sins of the world. For us, what's called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to share in the supper of the Lamb. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
guys rise up for the prayer afternoon. Grant we all pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated for a special welcome. And Jerry, well, Jerry will be giving us a cheetah for our announcements today on behalf of Dickie Jones. Morning. Morning. Deacon and Christine are in Indiana watching their granddaughter compete in the, in the gymnastics. And she's doing very well, by the way. That's why right. she's doing real well. <laughs> um, this week we will have our evening uh, week of CCB sessions. My grandson will be there, I hope. <laughs> We'd like to offer condolences to Priscilla and Tanya and the family members of Margaret Fogel Robinson who passed away this past week. There is synod information available on block notes and the website, and there's some few of them there at the door. You can pick one up as you leave. And this is the week that we get started on the synod. We ask everyone to participate as much as possible. Uh, there are uh, sessions available all week, and uh, in the flock notes and in the announcements, they'll tell you what, there are several days that you can pick and choose which one you want to be involved in. Um, another thing you want to remember is that we are now in the process of building our church. Yay! Yeah. Anyway. Just when you walk out or come in, realize that uh, you know there's only one way in and out now because these other doors are locked off. They got if you go out those doors, they just collapse into a big hole. So anyway, if you have children, you know you might want to keep an extra watch on those real small ones so they don't run off and go try to go through that door. Uh, that's all. I Thank you, Jerry. Just a reminder, too, CYO will also be kicking back in. We have another team, so Amu and Myron and myself will keep on leading and, and some other volunteers. Um, so this Wednesday, we're going to do a pre-Mardi Gras experience. So hope to see you this uh, Wednesday evening. And just come to the Wednesday 5 p.m. Mass, and then CYO will follow right after that. So look forward to being with our high schoolers. Amen? Um, also, just again, continue to... Um, Pray for all those who are seeking uh, to be married and uh, look forward to that. And so again, we want to have, if Aaron, you can stand up and just we can acknowledge them. So welcome. Congratulations. <laughs> we'll begin in our marriage preparation for them following the Mass. Also speaking of mercy, it's so hard to receive mercy if we're stuck in our misery. And guess what? Jesus doesn't want that. He wants you to receive his mercy. If you need sacrament of reconciliation, uh, we always have mass, uh, reconciliation 30 minutes before Mass or by appointment. So just know that the throne of God's mercy is always available to you. Amen? Yeah. I and mean, when you'd be surprised at Lexington Catholic, be like, Father, come over here. I'm like, what's up? <laughs> He's like, can I get a confession? I'm like, let's, he said, when can I do it? I'm like, now. I'm like, he was like, okay, cool. So just to know that reconciliation, sin, don't stay, sin, don't stay in it. Don't get stuck in it. When Jesus always says, I want you to have new life and abundant life, go to confession. It's awesome. I go myself. Can I get an amen? amen. Just so I can stay sane. All right. Um, <laughs> but let us continue to pray for pray. Lent is just a week or so away. So we just want to have, there's going to be some real special things. I just want to acknowledge there's going to be some mission trip, mission um, revivals over at Pax Christi that I'll be participating in. And a choir hopefully will be a part of that. So we're going to do, there's going to be some adoration at Lexington Catholic for vocations. I want to invite you out of that. There's going to be some other events and opportunities spiritually that we want you all to know that Lent's going to be special, but I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. It says in the, the rear, in that side view mirror that objects are closer than what they seem. Uh, so Lent is like just a little bit away. Uh, so I want to keep you in the forefront of that. What will you be doing with the Lord and how will you allow the Lord to give you the best Lent ever? 
uh, to stay closer to him and to get ready for Easter sacraments. We have over 13 folks becoming Catholic through St. Peter Claver this Easter. So, hallelujah. Uh, so a lot of, lot of growth, a lot of things happening every Sunday at Zoom in their meetings. So that's exciting. And they're going to have a retreat uh, with several folks uh, as well. So again, looking forward to Lent. Uh, keep that in mind and ask the Holy Spirit to tell you what are ways that you can grow. Amen. Great to be with you. The Lord be with you. And with your Thank you, ushers and everyone. Oh, uh, birthdays? No, that's next week. We already did That was just for the Saturday. Please stand. Yes. Sorry about that, everybody. We'll just keep on going. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Bow down for God's blessing. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. The closing hymn will be number 715, When We All Get to Heaven. Come on. 